as a lump of salt has neither inside nor outside and is altogether a homogeneous mass of taste even so this self my dear has neither inside nor outside and is altogether a homogeneous mass of intelligence this self comes out as a separate entity from the elements and with their destruction this separate existence is also destroyed after attaining this oneness it has no more consciousness this is what i say my dear so the said yagyavalki the self is neither inside nor outside it is free of all distinctions inside and outside appear only when there is duality only when there is you who is perceiving and something that is being perceived you take this skin bag as real and then you say that which lies to this side of this skin bag is inside and that which lies to this side of this skin is outside external and that is duality you see how flimsy and how skin deep is our definition of the i do you see how superficial is the ego you say that which is contained within this skin is me and all that which is outside this skin is the universe the world as long as you live in this dualistic consciousness yagyavalk is saying for you there is no brahm you have to see that there is no nose without the air that is outside you have to see that you have risen from the soil itself you have to see that you and the universe are one integrated whole only consciousness gives you the illusion of separate existence otherwise just as there is air so are you except in your thoughts you do not exist as an isolated entity i repeat except in your thoughts you do not exist as an isolated entity remove the universe and show me where are you change anything in the universe and you change change any parameter of the universe and see whether you remain as you are at the same time change a little bit of yourself and see whether the universe remains as it is you and universe are one integrated whole there is no inside and no outside really but this inside and outside is the business in which man spends his entire life you know what this one on the inside is always trying to do negotiate this expanse that is on the outside what else are we always trying to do we are trying to deal with the world this sense of dealing this sense of having the obligation to make one's way through the world is our curse are you getting it how does one live then let not the world be too important do not think of things as if they really matter if that really matters then do you know who really matters you really matter all of these are subtle ways of the ego by making anything in the universe important for yourself you have just made yourself very important and in making the universe important and in making yourself important do you know what you have made important you have made the distinction between yourself and the universe very important you have made your skin very important and that is why man lives all his life just saving his skin both literally and figuratively 
Why is man born? To save his skin. That is the way of duality. Save your skin. If the skin is not there, then duality perishes. You require division. Skin means division, boundary. And that is why man loves conflict. Because conflict is division. That is why man must fight. Because the skin is boundary, division. And that is why you must always have things that are limited by boundaries. Because wherever there are limits, there you get a chance to prosper. The ego flourishes there. Hmm? We all want the skin. We all want boundaries. Are you kidding? That is why we must have walls. What is a house without walls? In the name of houses, what do we have? Walls. Of, of course, no architect creates space. Space is anywhere there. What do you create in the name of a house? You raise walls. We need that. That is why we need skins upon skins. That is why we need faces upon faces. That is why we need multiple layers of clothing, of armors. Hmm? When these armors are gone, when these distinctions are gone, when this dualistic consciousness is gone, when the world is no more so much material, when you can be a little light, a little free, a little silent, when you are home, then you don't just walk under the influence of gravity. You kind of fly, lightly. Your feet are bound to the earth. You are not. Are you kidding? And then Maitreyi gives a parting gift. She says, Here you have completely bewildered me, venerable sir. Indeed, I do not at all understand this. It's beautiful. I do not at all understand this. Obviously, as long as there is I, there is no understanding. Look at the little game of love the wife is playing with the husband. Just as you are playing a game by walking away. I too know how to play games for now. The chapter is concluding and we both are one. If we both are one, we both know how to play games. Oh dear husband, you have foxed me. So smart are you. Obviously, I do not know any of what you are telling me. Obviously, I do not know. I just don't understand what you're saying. That must be the attitude of the spiritual mind. Both humble and playful. Humble enough to say, I do not know. And playful enough to say, I do not know, even when it does know. The devotee has God in his heart and still is always crying. When will you come to me? As if he does not already have him. Look at Meera, always singing for Krishna. As if she is not already Krishna. Both devotion and playfulness going together. Otherwise devotion will become a little boring. How long... And how many times can you just keep saying, I am that, I am that. Obviously you are that. Now say something else. 
So you say, oh, I'm probably not that. When will I get that? My dear husband, I do not understand what you're saying. And Yagyavalk too must play his part. So what does he say? Am I saying anything that is bewildering, my dear? Obviously, the self is immutable and indestructible. Obviously, verily. He does not want to spoil the fun. He does not say, dumb woman, do you really not get what I am saying? Or are you just playing games? He participates in the game. Hmm? That is the greatest respect you can offer to your loved one. When he plays a game with you, participate. Don't run away. Hmm? The unintelligent eye will think that Yagyavalk is walking away. The eye that really sees will see that Yagyavalk is involved at this moment in the most intimate of embraces with his wife. When only bodies meet, then nothing has met anything. Here it is union of another kind in another dimension. For when there is duality, as it were, then one sees another, one smells another, one tastes another, one speaks to another, one hears another, one thinks of another, one touches another, one knows another. But when to the knower of Brahm, everything has become the self, then what should he see and through what, what should he smell and through what, what should he taste and through what, what should he speak and through what, what should he hear and through what, what should he think and through what, what should he touch and through what, what should he know and through what, through what should one know that owing to which all this is known? This self is that which has been described as not this, not this. It is imperceptible for it is never perceived, undecaying, for it never decays, unattached, for it never attaches itself, unfettered, for it never feels pain and never suffers injury. Through what, O Matre, should one know the knower? Thus, thus you have the instruction given to you. This much indeed is the means to immortality. Old man is tired. Nothing else. And he is fed up of playing the game. The wife has probably just dropped a subtle hint. Come on. It appears that you are thinking that I really do not know. Such a long monologue. Are you talking to yourself? I know. For the Brahman there is no second. No other. But that does not mean that you will just soliloquize. Having said this, Yagyavalk renounced home. That's a joke. Yagyavalks never renounce anything. Yagyavalks are always home. Are you getting it? Do you still see a man and woman? Hmm? If you are a man, you will see a man and a woman. The Upanishad starts with talking of men and women because the readers are men and women. When the Upanishad concludes, you must see neither men nor women because you must remain neither men nor women. Hmm? Yakivalk has ended by talking about the falseness of otherness. Where is the other one? If there is no other one, who has been talking to whom? If there is no other place, where am I going, O Matri? If there is no other one, 
Whom am I quitting, O my friend? An occasion that could have been an occasion of misery, tears, disappointment, frustration is now an occasion of the greatest celebration, a celebration that reverberates through the ages. Yagyaval can metre are here and see that there is no mention of Katyayani. She has faded into the background. Who wants to talk of her? She is no more. And they are here. They will remain here. Who says that Yagyaval has walked away? Yagyavals never walk away into the sunset. They are the sun itself. And Yagyaval and Maitreyi are never separated because they are one, indivisible. The word love does not appear even once in this discourse. Now you know that you don't have to have a word for love. The elaborate chapter the entire discussion is a profound I love you from both sides. Yet the word love never appears. For the word love to appear, there must be I on one side of it and you on another side of it. When I and you come too close together, then even love does not find any space. Love is a kind of separation. That is why the Upanishads do not talk too much of love. Where there is absolute unity, who wants to talk of love? And that absolute unity is itself ultimate love. Thank mm -hmm. you.